So you might have a squeaky clutch pedal that sounds something like this. Now, not only can that get annoying, but it also may be indicative of a functional issue. There's four steps that we can take to mitigate this. We can use WD-40, grease the slave cylinder, replace the clutch master cylinder, and rebuild the clutch pedal. Now, for my NC Miata, I ended up having to actually do a clutch pedal rebuild, but I would recommend doing these in order, and I'm going to be showing you how to do each of them. So getting into the first of them was the application of WD-40. The first thing that you're going to want to do here is take a rag and just kind of stuff it along the back side of the clutch pedal. This is going to cover any of the electrical components or things that you do not want to be getting WD-40 on. Our real target here is the spring and you're just going to take some WD-40 and shoot it up in there at that spring. Where the pedal pivots, the spring will move in and out and that's what makes the pedal come back up when you push it down. Greasing this can often eliminate most of the mild squeaks, but if it's caused by something more serious, this will not actually do the trick. Try and work it into the pedal by moving the pedal back and forth. You can see my squeak was still there. So that led me to try the second thing, and this is greasing the slave cylinder fork. The slave cylinder sits on usually the driver's side of the transmission right there where it's circled, and this comes into contact with the clutch fork, and this is what actually engages and disengages the clutch. So sometimes this interaction of that ball and socket can get worn out, and that will also be a common cause of a squeal or a squeak. So taking just some normal grease to this will generally help alleviate this. So this was the next thing that I tried. Take any normal automotive grease and rub it all the way around the rod of the slave cylinder and we're just trying to work it into that joint and eventually down into the clutch fork. It can be hard to reach but generally if you move it back and forth a few times like so that will generally get some of that lubrication in there and eliminate the squeak that can be coming from the clutch fork. Unfortunately my squeak was still there so I'm moving on to the next method which involves taking apart the clutch pedal. So I removed it from the car, and as you can see, I noticed a few other things on the base here that we'll get back to, but the first thing that you do is just take the pedal out of the car, and that's gonna be allowing us to actually diagnose what in the pedal is failing. But while it's out, I also recommend doing a master cylinder change. So this is the clutch master cylinder. I went ahead and bought a new one. These are cheap parts, $40 to $50, and can also be the cause of a squeak. If the inside of your master cylinder has rust and the rod is not able to move back and forth smoothly, that can also result in a squealing sound. So not only is it good preventative maintenance to be doing, but it can also actually be the source of your noise. So. Taking apart the old one is pretty simple. All I'm doing here is with the pedal removed, I'm able to move the old master cylinder around. We're gonna pull that off and there's two hoses that we have to swap over. The first is the braided one, the stainless steel one that you see there. That leads down to the slave cylinder that we lubricated earlier. And the other one just leads to the clutch fluid reservoir, which in this case is actually shared with the brake fluid reservoir. So I unscrew the, the clutch line that goes down to the master cylinder, and that allows us to set this aside. You might notice that I have a towel here. This is because the clutch fluid is also the same as brake fluid, and it's very corrosive towards paint. So you don't want any of it getting anywhere. So I recommend taking paper towels or rags and putting them up against your paintwork before replacing the master cylinder. You then screw the line into the new one and go ahead and tighten it down with an open end wrench. Then we have to go ahead and change over the reservoir line and that will have our new master cylinder fully installed. So you're generally just gonna take the hose, make sure the hose clamps are on there but not on the ends just yet and wiggle it on like so, facing the direction of the reservoir. Then take some needle nose pliers, squeeze the hose clamp down and move it over to the end of the hose and this is going to make sure that it's held on there tightly and fluid cannot escape. This is the most challenging part and this is where you're going to take another rag and stuff it under the clutch fluid reservoir or in my case the brake fluid reservoir because this is probably the messiest step of the entire process. I have my old line still on there and I'm getting ready to take it off at this point but when that fluid comes out, I don't want it getting down into the engine bay and damaging the paint because once again, this stuff is corrosive. So it's the same process. Take a pair of needle nose pliers and take that hose clamp off. But first and foremost, we want to get the new master cylinder in the position that it needs to be. So I'm going ahead and pushing that back down into its position. 
And the reason this is important is most hoses are given to you too long like this one and that means that we're going to have to cut it and to know what length to cut it I needed the master cylinder to be in its sitting position. Just go ahead and take some scissors, we'll usually cut one of these hoses nice and flat and that's going to get it to the length that we need it to be. I actually ended up leaving this one a little bit too long and I went back for a second cut. It's better to cut it too long than to cut it too short because if it goes too short you can't do anything about it. So do it in steps until you feel comfortable with the length that it's at. Now here is the critical part. Take the pliers, remove the hose clamp, and I'm going to quickly try and pull this hose off and put the new one on as fast as I physically can. It takes a little bit of force and eventually it did pop off right here. You can see the fluids that kind of squirt out immediately and I right away get the new one on. This makes it so that the process is as clean as possible and I spilled the smallest amount of fluid as I physically could. I ended up actually only getting a few drops on the rag, so this ended up being a job well done. Lastly, we're going to take the hose clamp on the other end and just slide it up to the top and this will complete the installation of the new clutch master cylinder. In many cases, this will actually solve your pedal squeal if the case was something with the master cylinder going wrong, such as rust being on the inside of it, or any roughness that could be happening with the clutch pedal interface. That pretty much wraps things up here. We have this all tucked away. You can just wipe down all your surfaces, make sure you don't have any brake fluid left over sitting anywhere, and now we have the old one out. And as I suspected, there is rust kind of all over this rod, so this could have been part of the squeal that I was hearing, but it turned out not to be the main culprit. As I said earlier, when we come back to this base, I noticed that it was very weak, and this is a common problem with Miatas, because they only make two small tack welds that hold this plate on. And as a result, this pedal has a lot of flex in it, and I didn't know if that might be contributing to it too. Those are the two spots where there is some flex, and I wanted to go ahead and weld them down to make sure they're secure. So I went ahead and just made a few small weld beads around those areas, making sure not to interfere with the holes. This is not essential or even relevant to stopping clutch pedal squeak, but I figured while I had it out, this was something that should have been done. And as always, anytime that you weld anything, you're always going to want to paint it to make sure that your welds don't rust and that they hold up as good as possible over time. So with the pedal all welded up, the next thing I did was tape it up with some paper towels and some painter's tape to go ahead and spray paint the areas where I welded it just to make sure that we don't get any issues or rust there in the future. So I went ahead, took it outside, and used engine paint. Now, although that might seem odd, these things could be exposed to a good bit of heat that could potentially come through the firewall, and I don't want the paint bubbling or melting or anything like that. So engine paint is rated to what I believe is up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, so I figured it would be a good thing to be using here just to ensure that I'm not going to have any problems in the future. I just did two different coats using light dustings go around the entire thing. I didn't want any runs or drips. And then I went ahead and flipped the pedal over to its other side to reach the other welds that I wasn't able to. And I went ahead and completed the same exact process. And now all of our welds are covered up with paint, protected, and we're not gonna have any problems. So I went ahead, took all of the tape off after letting it dry for a solid few hours and this was the final result. I think it turned out pretty good and the weld should be decently protected. Now this is the fourth and most critical part. This is the pedal rebuild. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take out the spring. You have to move the pedal into the forward position to push the spring out to its outermost edge, then squeeze the spring and release it from its joint. Then there's going to be two bearings and these bearings sit on either side of the spring, and this is universal for most clutch pedals. I took these bearings out and immediately realized that this was the culprit of my pedal squeak and is likely the case if you have an NC Miata for yours as well. Now, you can see the bearing is all torn up on one side over years of that spring working itself back and forth and applying force, it eventually tore through it, and now the spring is scraping against bare metal, which explains the squealing sound that I've been hearing all along. So here's how we're going to fix this. I went ahead and took a rag and we're cleaning out all the debris that is in those bearing holes. I don't want any dirt left in there because that could be also contributing to the scratching and squealing that we're hearing. Same goes for the spring. When we reinstall the spring, I want it clean and freshly lubricated. So I have to remove all of the old dirt, grease, and debris that has built up on it over the years. And this is going to help reduce the noise of the clutch pedal when it's all back together. 
With that being done, the next thing I had to do was get new bearings. I went on Amazon and found bearings of similar size. I couldn't find the OEM part, but these were just simple Teflon bushings that were, had a flange on the end like the original bearings, and that's what's going to be holding them in place. I bought 40 of them because I was able to buy them in bulk, and that way if these ever break, I have many more in the future. So from there, I was test fitting them, making sure that the size that I ordered was indeed correct, and as it turns out, it was, and this is the most important part. I'm now going to be greasing the new bearings. This is what's going to keep it nice and quiet and help reduce wear over time as I put this clutch pedal back together. I greased both bearings on both the inside and outside diameters to reduce friction between the bearing and the metal, as well as the bearing and the spring. Then I went ahead and installed them, popped them into both sides, and now it's almost time to put the spring in. But before I did, I wanted to go ahead and lubricate the spring as well. This spring has three contact points in the middle and on each end, so I took more of the same automotive grease that I've been using the whole time and put it on each of the ends of the spring, and now this thing is pretty much ready to go back into the pedal. With that being said, it's the same exact process in reverse. Move the clutch pedal forward to accept the spring, squeeze the spring, let it fall into the bearings, and now I have a nice smooth fitment where the spring is able to move freely and it's not scraping against the metal anymore. Then I had to take this middle piece and bend it back down into the actual clutch pedal interface, and this is kind of the hardest part of putting the pedal back together. You have to push with quite a bit of force, but once it's in, the pedal pretty much just snaps right back into place. You just push on the front of the spring, and the pedal will snap back to its down position and accept the spring back into its housing. That being said, the clutch pedal is now fully rebuilt, with the bearings fixed and replaced, the spring is no longer scraping against metal, and that is going to be solving our sound that we've been hearing. The clutch pedal squeak is going to be going away. And lastly, just reinstalling the limit switch and any other electronics that you may or may not have taken off the clutch pedal. This is not a necessity. I only did it because I was spray painting the pedal and didn't want to risk destroying any of the small onboard electronics that come housed with it. So let's get this thing back into the car and see if the squeal is actually gone. So there you go, clutch pedal is fixed and that's the four steps that I use to fix a squeaky clutch pedal and it should work for you too as well. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for the rest of this NC Miata build series.